This is uh, Tuesday, the uh, what, 16th of September, 2014, and welcome to the show with no name. I'm Bob Going with Jim Nicosia and Gavin Murdoch, and as soon as everybody's got headphones, we're going to start talking. How's, uh, let's see. Okay, you're on. I'm on. You on, Gavin? Am I on, Gavin? Yeah, you're good. All right. Yeah, okay. All right. We're back in. Uh, oh, I gotta get a plug. Get one yet. Back in progress. All right. What have we been up to? Uh, Bagpiper played at a big wedding at Albany Country Club over the weekend. Oh, cool. Uh, Bagpiper is going out to New Hampshire Friday for the weekend. It's the big Northeastern uh, Championships. You going with them? Yes. That's how he gets there. I'm the official chauffeur of the right. Piper of. For the show, with no. So they're not, they're not taking like a whole bus load out or something. No, they always drive yourselves out. Yeah. Different people leave at different times. As long as you're all there on time, Saturday morning at eight o'clock to get started. And what part of New Hampshire are we talking about here? We're going up to um, Lincoln. It's up in the uh, up, uh, White, uh, White, White Mountain Mount National Mount Forest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we're going to be up there camping out for two days and. Having a wonderful time because the sun's going to shine, birds are going to sing, and the pipers are going to play. That's so cool. All right. We're all in business. Can We're you hear, Jim? I can hear. Okay. All right. And, uh, Jim, I uh, see you uh, made Philip Tambasco's uh, question of the day. Uh, who, were, who were some of the uh, uh, firemen in the olden days? The olden days? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, I was in the, one of the olden days. <laughs> which, which, which house were you stationed in? All of them. I was you couldn't find one they liked you I was you a in? jump man. They called me a jump man. I had a, when somebody was out, they would send me to that firehouse and wow. Was, you were I, low man on the top. I was low, yeah, real low at the time, yeah. yeah. So so back in those days did they uh, still have that fire truck with the, uh, the with the two steering wheels, uh, the one in the back? Yes, the they did. That's the, the hook and ladder. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, how did that work? I I I drove the back of it just once. How was that? It was <laughs> any telephone poles still left standing? Well, the 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 fence along the Mohawk River <laughs> came almost came down. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, my first day on it, uh, we just we got a call and I had to go out with the on the back. That was a uh, and somebody traumatic. said, "Can you can you drive, Jim?" And you said, well, "Sure." Yes, he says, "Just remember," he says, "Everything is backwards up there." You want to turn okay. right? You turn left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta. If you're gonna turn right, you gotta turn. If you're gonna turn left, you gotta turn right first to get the back end around the corner. Wow. But uh, like I said, I almost took down the fence. I think, I think you only drove it once. <laughs> I think, it, <laughs> and, and I, it wasn't because of my bad driving. I remember oh. watching. <laughs> I remember watching it go up Wall Street and taking a turn on Mechanic or something one time. You know, it says. This is amazing that, <laughs> that this truck can even make these turns onto these narrow streets. Hey, we got a call. 843-2500 is the number, by the way. This is WCSS. You're on the air. Yeah, I'm curious as to uh, who owned the mansion on Academy Street. Uh, uh, the one that's for sale for like uh, a gazillion dollars? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful building. Oh, and it's, it's covered it, it, by you know, trees. It, it was always a gorgeous house, and uh, and the I think the, it's the current owners uh, uh, restored it to its uh, former glory. I don't know if they'll ever get the money out of it that they put into it, but it's uh, it is a magnificent house. I don't know who they are. I don't think they were from here. You don't know who owned it to begin with. Uh, oh, originally, you mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no idea. No idea, but I know the house you're talking about, and it is beautiful. And, and, it is very beautiful. And I've, I've seen the uh, 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 the photographs of the inside on, on the real estate site, uh, and it's it's great. It's great. Of course, it's you know. Yeah. It's, it's where it is. One of hidden treasures, I guess. Yeah, and it it, it sets. Uh, Actually, it's it's right behind uh, the houses on Mechanic Street that burned down uh, a few years ago. So there, so it's now got an even clearer view than it had before. It is a gorgeous building. Yep, yep, yep. Probably one of the older houses in town too. I imagine at the time it was built, it was uh, top of the hill. Yep, I lived in the neighborhood all my life, and I've never noticed it. 
Yeah, it's 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 buried in there. I was you know I grew up on Trinity Place, and uh, it wasn't until uh, it was for sale recently that I even uh, realized uh, that it existed and existed in its uh, pristine form, no no less. I'm gonna have to it had to belong to one of the Amsterdam's millionaires. It had to. Oh, at the time, I'm sure. Yeah. But I don't right, know. Unfortunately, I don't know the answer. I usually know the answer to these things, but I have no idea. That means okay, I, that means I'm going to have to take a ride over there because I don't recall seeing the house. Yeah, it's about I don't know. It's, uh, it's on Dr. Marini's side of the of, of Academy Street, a couple houses in from there, I think. Uh, I don't think it's right next door, but it's it's in that block. I got to check it out. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful place. A lot of nice houses in town. Yeah, there are. Uh, yes, uh, there are. Mine, for example, you know, that's, uh, you know. Yeah, Any, yeah, anybody anybody nice interested? House. You, you, right. can, you can see uh, Mike Chayera's house. You can place. see Mike It doesn't Chayera's get any better than that. You know? Actually, I uh, I looked out. I the hand signals. Uh, hand signals, uh, yeah. I, I looked out the bedroom window uh, yesterday, and uh, guess what? I can't see Mike's house anymore. Where <laughs> the, the trees have grown oh, up in, oh, in, yeah. in my yard, not his. In my yard, so. Uh, yeah, you can cut them down and no more hand signals between you and no, me. No, no, but we had a clear view. We had a clear view before. You can still from the attic. You can you, see. you can control the river from the attic with one <laughs> one piece of artillery. <laughs> yeah. and sufficient ammunition. Nobody will get by. Would you need a parrot gun or would you need a howitzer? Uh, I think either would do actually. Yeah. You'd have better direction with your with your parrot gun though. Well, you could aim that. You can't aim your howitzer as accurately. Yeah, but you know, if you're if you're plopping them down in the narrow Mohawk River, nobody's going to try to get by you. Yeah. Well, if you need a if you need a gun, uh, a cannon, call my son. He's made uh, several. All right, there you go. FBI on the way. ATF. <laughs> All right. This is WCS Asher on the air. Good morning, Bob. I got a yeah. I got a question for Jim. Go ahead. Go ahead. When you tell her, when when you tell her the fire truck. It's only one on one call with it? Yes. All right, I killed it myself, and I was only uh, practicing with it. I never got to take it to a call. <laughs> well, you, 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 did Jim teach you? Is that, is that... <laughs> no, no, Jim. Jim had left when I got there. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, I Matter of fact, I think it was the uh, I think it was the first call, maybe the first time I got on the thing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think I was oh, going to, I was going to go out to practice, and we got a call. How long and, was and it? I, br- oh. I don't know. Forty. Uh, <laughs> Fifty feet. What, what was your What was your favorite station, Jim? You said you were uh, you worked at all of them. I did too. What was your favorite? Uh, my favorite was actually uh, uh, four, up on Bun oh, Street. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My side. Yeah, my, mine was six. No, nobody bothered me up there. Oh, oh. <laughs> Where well, was that's, that's the way it was at Sixes. Nobody yeah. bothered me up there either. Which yeah. one was Six? Yeah. That's Pulaski. Pulaski Street? Pulaski Street, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, All we'll, right, I just had a check with you. <laughs> yeah, it was nice up there. Uh, we got Billy Armstrong was there. He was down in the cellar doing on some project. Uh, if uh, if was one of the other guys was probably asleep and <laughs> nobody bothered me, so I could sit there and read a book and you know whatever I wanted to do. Nobody was bothering me. You know that's funny you mention that because when I worked at Sixes, I worked with Billy Armstrong too. Really? Yeah, he was a chauffeur at Sixes when I was up there. All right, he was chauffeur at uh, at Bun Street when I was there. <laughs> yeah, well, that was fours. Yeah. Wow. Did that. Uh, well, I. I yeah, Jack London. I just had to throw that in there. Yeah, Jack London was the uh, was uh, the captain, or the lieutenant at the time. Then he made captain. Right. Is that before he wrote the book Cry of the Wild? No, no, no. It's the other Jack London. This is Jack London, the fire chief. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Uh. Jack London was uh, the assistant chief when I came on, yeah. and right. then later made chief. Yeah, right. that was. He he was the chief when I got married, and the reason I I remember that is. Uh, uh, is we had our we had our reception scheduled and uh, he he leans over to me at lunch one day he says I I don't want to upset you he says but the guy who runs your restaurant is about to be arrested for arson. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. That was at that fire. Yeah, so and, and that was like a month before the wedding. You know? Yeah, wasn't wasn't yeah. the tra- uh, the training was great in our day, wasn't it? It was on the job. Oh training. yeah, on the job training. Absolutely terrific. Yeah, yeah. Oh JT. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
So. All right, I didn't mean to tie you guys up, but I, I had to throw oh, that in there. I wanted what, to find out what go. Jimmy that, liked the best. That's, that's what the here. show's about. All right, <laughs> thanks a lot. Bye bye. All right, bye bye bye. This is WCSS. You're on the air. Just a little nostalgia. Uh, yeah. I grew up next door to the firehouse on number six. They were the nicest guys you wanted to see. Yeah, they uh, were. I remember yeah. Callahan is one, and uh, Bonafetti, and I can't remember the other names, but they watched the kids in the neighborhood. I remember one time I crossed the street, and let me tell you, they gave me hell. <laughs> <laughs> that I wasn't supposed to cross the street. I had to be careful when I watched, you know, cross the street. And then when I got married, they brought the fire truck out and rang the bells. Oh, wow. Isn't that great? Yeah. They were a good bunch of guys. I can remember my brother and my father going there, and they used to play cards with them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that Those was like yeah, old old days. Neighborhood social club. Yeah, that was, they were very that, nice guys, all of them, that, every one of them. That was probably pretty close to before my time because when I went on, Bonifed was uh, a lieutenant at uh, at three. Okay, this yeah. was before the before the fifty fives. Yeah, well, that was before me on the department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, all right. it okay, was a, have a good day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, you know, because you you know the economics of the thing are the economics of the thing, and uh, they, and you really can't afford to keep all these little neighborhood firehouses anymore. But they, yeah. but they they were part of the neighborhood. You yeah, know? they were uh, yeah. people that you meet each day. Yeah. And now, it, now you know where they are. Uh, they they get to the fires faster, but they're isolated from the rest of the world. You know? Yeah, I don't know if they get there any faster. Well. I don't know if they get there any faster. Well, whatever. I mean, you had a yeah. neighbor, you had a neighborhood but they are, truck. They're isolated from the neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, they don't have the they don't have the day to day contact. Yeah, the neighbors uh, would come yeah. in with the yeah. with a snack now and then, or a cake, or some cookies, or you know, yeah. or yeah. something the, left the, over. The Elaine come over and uh, Elaine, and, and, Elaine and did bring a lot. Of, Elaine yeah. did a lot of cooking for uh, when I was for at the boys. Central Station. <laughs> <laughs> this is WCSS. You're on the air. Yes, hi. Is uh, Gavin Murdoch on today? He, he's right here. Yes, I are. Yes, you are. Okay, i got a couple questions for you. This new um, pre-K, I guess, yes. they're calling it. Um, now, is that going to be mandated? No. 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 The, okay. The pe people could elect to go full day or remain at half time. Okay, because so yet, when they reach, in other words, if they reach the age of four, they do not have to go? Pre-K is not required any place, nor is kindergarten. Right, okay. Yeah. But we pay school taxes for kindergarten. Um, and also have one yeah, other question. You're paying question. school taxes for pre-K, too. <laughs> well, you're paying Pardon? tax. Yeah. Yeah. we got a got a full-day grant. But, yeah, it's, it's your tax money is one way or another, no matter how you look at it. Exactly. Uh, one more question for you. Did Mr. Perillo receive a raise at this um, closed-door meeting? There has been no decisions made. The contract is still being negotiated. Okay. Do you have a rough idea when it would be finalized? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. Well, thank you for your answers, and hopefully um, I'm glad that you're truthful. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Bye. All right. Okay. So when you come out of an executive session and say you took no action, that means? We took no action. You took no action. All That's right. right. Okay. I thought we had a second call. I guess. That, was, no. that was one of the calls on an earlier program of, uh, of the discussion about the, the superintendent's uh, raise. No, there. Everything's under negotiation. That's good. Negotiate. At, uh, at the end of the negotiation, you say no. We must uh, never <laughs> negotiate from fear, but we should never fear to negotiate. <laughs> hey, they've got a tremendous Ken Burns. The Roosevelt. Thing. Roosevelt yeah. this week. Kind of wish I had TV this week. Yeah. I bet you do. Yeah, did, so did you catch the uh, Teddy stuff on I, Sunday night? I caught. Uh, and Monday. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he is. He was a remarkable individual. Uh, he, uh, he was a man for, uh, man of his age. Uh, he uh, he's one some of the most remarkable men who ever lived. Actually, you know, whether you agree or disagree with this position or that position he took, uh, there was never another like him and there never will be the the man the man became an expert in everything he chose to become an expert at that's right uh i spent a good deal of time when i first got my kindle downloading everything he ever wrote <laughs> <laughs> 
And it, it is amazing. Uh, when, he was, when he was in high school, he wrote the definitive book on the, uh, the, the, the natural, natural history of the Adirondacks. Uh, you know, he would go out and find his own, uh, own fossils of the, and cl bird collections. He was and everything a taxidermist. Else. Yeah. He, After he, he shot he's him. like 17 years old, yeah. and he, he writes the definitive book on this subject. He's in college. At, at Harvard, and uh, he decides uh, he wants to learn more about the naval history of the War of 1812, which is kind of uh, Interesting. You know, in, in tune with what, what we've been yeah. discussing lately. We'll get the call. Uh, and, and he knows nothing about ships or, or armaments or anything else going into it. And again, writes the definitive book on the subject that they still study on both sides of the Atlantic. And I've, and I've read it, and it's amazing. It's amazing. He, you know, he looks at every battle, uh, what armaments were on each ship, why, uh, why this ship had an advantage over that ship, uh, uh, the, the tactics they use to uh, approach each other and things like that. And it's a guy who knew absolutely nothing on the subject. Yeah. Uh, and his history of the American West is absolutely magnificent. Magnificent. It's uh, how the West was won uh, the right way, actually. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, 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 indeed, going to, it, and he went to all the original records. He w he'd, he'd go to these, you know, county clerk's offices in Kentucky and, 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 and go through the different reports of the skir skirmishes with the Indians. And uh, just incredible. And then, of course, I will... Uh, I, uh, We'll leave you with a quote from Benjamin Harrison, who was President of the United States. Yes, he was. And Theodore Roosevelt was the Assistant Civil Service Director of the United States. The Assistant Civil Service Director, not even the Director of Civil Service, the Assistant Director of Civil Service. And Benjamin Harrison says, you know, the problem with young Mr. Roosevelt is that he uh, expects to solve all the problems of the world between sunup and sundown on the same day. <laughs> And that, yeah. everything he did, police commissioner of New York, Gusto. He was a national figure when he had like m very minor positions, uh, be because you know he, he was the subject of cartoons and everything else. And, and he becomes governor. Wow. This is WCSS. You're on the air. Good morning. I just wanted to add a comment to your previous discussion on the firefighters sure. and the uh, the locals fire stations, nobody could have captured it or given more of a tribute than Maria Ricky O'Brice did to the local fire uh, stations in her song about the station up on Pulaski Street from the Oratorio. Yes, I, re I remember it. I, uh, you know, I was just trying to think whether we have a copy of it here, and I don't think we do. Otherwise, uh, I'll play it. Everything. She captured the whole spirit of the city. I mean, the woman is a genius. <laughs> it was so beautiful. I love that. I love that CD. I, I still uh, give it as gifts. Uh, did you, uh, was there any part of it you didn't like? Oh, well, you know, the no, no, the, the, the <laughs> answer is no, because it's terrific from beginning to end. I mean, it's gorgeous, but yeah. as far as painfully beautiful and yes. poignant, that requiem that yeah. you posted well, yes, on, on yes, the Internet is, yes. you know, I look at it because I don't want to forget, but, boy, is it painful to watch and hear. Yep. 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 Well, that's all. I just wanted to add that. Okay. Maybe you could find a copy and play it sometime on the Internet. I, I will look for it. I, I know okay, I, ha I, know, I, I, I have know it at home. I know a certain man who used to play the school song every every first day of school, <laughs> and the tradition has been carried on by I'm another broadcaster, so <laughs> I'm happy Again. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you have a good day. You too. That was you, a, yeah, that was one of my favorites, that first day of school. But yeah, there's so much, you know. You know, there's stuff that's funny, there's stuff that's nostalgic, and there's something there's stuff that just sad. kicks you right in the gut. Yeah. Uh, did they have the Did they have the the hearing last night? Yeah, I guess so. I didn't you go? No, I didn't. No. No. I I know there was is in the paper that there's supposed to be one, but or I didn't see any write up uh, today on the in the Gazette. What's tonight? The uh, Common Council meeting. Tonight's a council meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Diane said it's going to be on the TV, so. It is? Yeah. I, I got the impression that it was not going to be on the TV, but Philip was going to try to record it like we do anyway and put it on YouTube. I think she made the comment that she was going to 
have it on TV like she did the last one. Yeah. Yeah. But there was some some, some kind of problem with Time Warner about it. I don't know what it was. Well, I think she took care of it. Was supposed to have taken care of it. I hope. Yeah, <laughs> let's hope so. Yeah. How, how up to date is your information? Uh, early this morning. I heard somebody well, okay. say it. All right. Might be true. Might be true. We'd, I'd ask Philip, but he's probably in school right now. He should be in school right now. He should be no, in class. He should be. He should be in class. Should be. But if you're not, Philip, give us a call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let us know what's up. <laughs> now, tonight but is we the... We won't turn you in. <laughs> now, tonight's parents' night at Amsterdam High School. For all the parents of students who go to the high school, they should attend and meet all their uh, students' teachers and get to low down what's going to be taking place in class. Is uh, Tony Arapello going to humiliate some parents again? Well, probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, but a lot of those parents, you went to school with themselves, so. Well, I, I, I'm aware of that, but. <laughs> I missed something. But, uh, no, it's when, uh, you know, I helped my son with a project in uh, biology class, and, uh, and, and and Tony actually held it up as an example of uh, what, what not, not to, to do. Look at this. Look at this. You know, come on. You know. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a teacher. Now he must have known I was there, right? He, oh, yeah, he knew. He knew. Yeah. yeah. When I was a teacher, never once did I ever give a project for kids to do, because one, the project is usually done by the parent if it's really good, and number two, I didn't like doing projects when I was a kid. I wanted to do the other stuff. I didn't want to try to build something right, or right. be creative and make yeah, a I hated long that. house or yeah. make a rocket ship. Or I just, I, I didn't like that. And I, I always decided, you know, I wasn't going to do that to other kids, uh, give them these projects. Right. You know. So there, so your classroom never had models of the U.S. Capitol made with ice, uh, with uh, sugar uh, cubes? cubes or no, no, never, no. never did. No, <laughs> no. no. Okay. Uh, I did allow uh, students to paint on my walls, paint uh, Native American portraits on my walls, and uh, they still save those uh, paintings at the high school. But I never, you didn't have to do a project, you didn't have to build something. You had to look stuff up, do some research, do papers, but not a hands-on building uh, project. The Hated it. The classic was... You know, and my son has gone through school. The French fair. Did, uh, did you, oh, oh my God. You were probably in the same French fair I was. Yes, I was. Yes, yes, I was. With sister, uh, sister Roseanne, and yeah. yeah. I, I, I just I couldn't hate do it. it. I had this. I, I had this grand, grand scheme when it when it started. I was going to yeah. make uh, un petit village en France, a little village in France. All right, okay. And uh, and I had this. You know, I had like I had like this old tape recorder, this little, little portable reel to reel. And I, what I was, I was going to take the motor out of it and use it to make this turntable, so that the you know you have the whole uh, panorama of this village with the scene changing and all that stuff. Well, that didn't last very long. <laughs> I got I got up to the day before it was due, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm running around trying to come up with something, and then the motor thing wasn't wasn't going to work. I couldn't get, I couldn't get that because you know you couldn't get enough oomph out of it yeah. to to do what I wanted it to do. And it it was it was, what I handed in was a disgrace. Okay, I, I will I will confess that it was a disgrace. Uh, I, I just found a few things lying around the basement, threw them together, and uh, you know a little piece of plasterboard and a piece of cloth. It, it was just god awful. The, <laughs> the rest of the rest of the story I may not tell. I'm glad we got a call because you know I don't want to. I don't want to destroy my Your pristine image. reputation. <laughs> this is WCSS. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Good, good. I have a question for Gavin. Uh, they're having tonight at the high school open house Yes. conferences? Or? It, it, okay, yeah. The, what, the way they do it is they get all the parents in the auditorium first, and they do a little talk to them by the principal. And then the, teach, then the, the, the parents follow their child's schedule. So they have an opportunity over the period of an hour and a half, two hours, to go to the classroom where their son or daughter is being taught, meet the teacher. If there's issues, you can make an appointment to come back and speak individually with the teacher if there's something not, not particularly to their liking, uh, the way their child's working in school at this point. Okay. What, what did the school district have to give up to get the teachers to work at night? They've the always... Since at least 1985 when I started here, we've always had it. So I have no idea what the negotiations were originally on that. But it's still in place. Yep. I know in some districts it's the day after Thanksgiving off. 
they and they have half days. At, at, when I was teaching one year, I believe they tried to um, do like the elementaries where there's a half day is class and then uh, regular appointments are made with the parents to come in. We did that once at the high school and it didn't we didn't get the numbers of parents nor the parents we wanted to reach to come in for that. So they went back to the the other system where we have them come in at night right. after work and, and have a chance to go, go through. You know, some classes are sparsely attended and other ones you have a huge audience in. Yeah, and generally the parents that attend are the ones whose students are doing good and they really don't have any reason other than to... Uh, Make you know, uh, known. thank the teachers for what they're doing, and the teachers recognize the work that the kids are putting in. But the ones that should be there don't come, right? That's uh, occasionally is a tr case. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Have a good day. You too. Uh, you're listening to WCSS fourteen ninety on your dial in Amsterdam, New York. This is the show with no name. Oh, you're on the air. Good morning. This is this is stubborn Jack, Bob. Stubborn Jack Langley, how you doing, pal? Good. I have a suggestion for your show that's going to put it right on Broadway. Okay, it's okay because I I hope it's a musical because I like to sing and dance. Bring back Kaiser's Corner. Oh, and we had it last Friday. You missed it. I had to work, but I tell you what you can do for Kaiser's Corner. Read the poem about the soldier who nobody wanted anything to do with him until they needed him. Ah, uh, it's Tommy this and Tommy that and Tommy, uh, get, you know, right, but it's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You I, got it. I got it. I'll come up with it. I'll come up okay, with it. We'll okay, we'll see you I, on Broadway. All right. Okay. Okay, bye now. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you were talking about that <coughs> French project that we, we did <laughs> the first year at Scully, and I got myself in the same box that you did. I was going to be doing mine with a... Um, gentleman from Tribes Hills, a local insurance agent. Oh, yes. And we were going to team up, but the day before, uh, another gentleman from Tribes Hill was in a pickle, and the two Tribes Hillians sided together, and they went together on the one project, and I was left out and had the cob job something together, and I, too, was sorely embarrassed at the, uh, the projects that were presented, and uh, I determined then I would never make kids do a project as long as whenever I was a teacher. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Hated well, it. Well, it was uh, it was one of the worst experiences of my life. Uh, with, uh, she made us uh, r write an invitation to our parents. Yeah, All mine right? got lost in the mail. Well, this is my story. <laughs> so, uh, so I I knew what I had handed in. I said, I'm not inviting my parents to this. You know, <laughs> this is uh, this is you know. I was embarrassed enough on my own without having my parents come and see this and be humiliated. You know, so. So I, 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 instead of addressing it to my father and mother, I addressed it to my uh, late grandfather. <laughs> and he was, he was late for it, huh? I, at an address, I, he, he died in 1934, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I put an address on my paper route, so, you know, hopefully if it got sent there, uh, somebody would say, hey, going, is this you? Oh, yeah, I'll take that, you know. <laughs> right, I had it all planned out. Uh, except that... Uh, uh, Chris Freer worked in the worked in the office during the day. Okay, and she comes she comes she comes running into the cafeteria and and she says, "Your letter came back to the office." I said, "Oh my God, go back and grab it." I said, "Get it out of there before it gets sent to Sister Roseanne." <laughs> and uh, she wasn't able to do it. It had already gone through when oh. when she got back. She wasn't able to intercept it. So a couple of days later, you know, along with my D minus. Uh, uh, a letter came home. Yeah. You know, with with my with the original with my original <laughs> my, my original letter and the original envelope addressed to my late grandfather. <laughs> so, needless to say, my mother, who was a teacher yes. uh, by profession, uh, was not amused uh, by this, and she had me sit in the kitchen until my father came home. Now, by this time. I'm like what, 16 years old. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not a little kid anymore. But I sat in the, and uh, my father reads the letter from Sister Roseanne, which said, among other things, and and the uh, invitation went to the wrong address. Deliberate? Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm sitting there, and my father's reading this, and then he just bursts out laughing. <laughs> He understood. <laughs> My mother is Frank. What's the matter with you? <laughs> he understood completely. Yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> he was a kid once. He, knew. he was a kid once. As a matter of fact, he was a kid once who got thrown out of St. Mary's, and the, and they spent the he, he and three of his friends got thrown out of class. And they spent the afternoon playing pool at Fort Trinity Place, which was the house I was sitting in when he was supposed to be chastising me. So all he had to do was turn around and remember the pool table yeah. in the back room. And, uh, he knew. And his mother didn't find out about that for 25 years. <laughs> this is WCSS. You're on the air. Yes, yeah, so this is for the person that's on the school board. Yeah, I'd like to ask him a question. Is he going to bring, are they, uh, school board going to bring up about the veteran exemption? I, I can't guarantee it's going to be brought up this month, but I know it's it's one of the things that they, we've been talking about. And I know you, no, you I, call well, you call been talking about this for a long time, well, right. for for a little while now. I, and I, I was just, just wondering if you were going to bring this up or not. We can make a mention. I can I can bring it up if you want me to. If it's not on there. Well, yeah, that's the very agenda. important. You know, this uh, veterans uh, exemption thing. I think that's very important. I appreciate it. You know, I will bring it up. Be brought up and see what you are going to do with this. I will bring it up for you, sir. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Okay. All right. In on yes, ours. Yeah. You try. This is WCSS. You're on the air. Hello, Robert. How you doing? Uh, just great. What's up with you? I heard you guys got your key on up there, huh? Did you get your heat on? Uh, I refuse to put the heat on until October. Mine's not on. No. No, I, I did turn the oven on for a little bit, and the dryer ran a little bit longer than it should have. But uh, uh, aside from I that, some, yeah. I don't think I was taking cold up there. But can I got better. Bob, I got better. Kids are going down here. Why well, is it cold down there? No, it's uh, my. Uh, is it down to eighty yet? <laughs> well, it's the the humidity right now is very high, so I can't. You know, you know I got to keep the air conditioner going for a while until the humidity breaks. Yeah, you know, keep so, the yeah. air conditioner on. Well, we're not spending money on air conditioning, Gavin, are we? Uh, no, I'm definitely not. not. Keep the window open and the fan on, and blow that cold air in. That's right. Good sleeping weather. Now, we even had sure. the, yeah, we even had a couple of windows open last night. So yeah, it was great sleeping weather. Great sleeping weather. By the way, Jim, uh, Jim and Bob, I will tell you something about the town of Perth up there. I sit in there. I mean, uh, I guess, uh, I guess. Uh, George Amador is running again, which is nice to hear about. And I uh, and I want to say something up in up in the town of Perth. I I try to get two people run up there, you know, up in the town of Perth up there, you know. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, Jerry I, Claus and I, I, I got uh, Scott, so I don't want to go to run. So you know, so. I've been following Amador on Facebook, and uh, he's posting these pictures yep. where he's campaigning. And what a district that is! You know, the the, the there oh, he is, yeah, right. there yep. he is going yep. door to door in Athens, which is across the river from my daughter. Then he's down at Saugerties uh, at some event, and he get, and, and he goes all the way down to Kingston, and then it kind of wraps around. And yeah. a, uh, Bob, is this a gerrymandered district? You think it, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a Georgia Georgia mandered uh, Georgia mandered Georgia mandered. That's right. They made it specifically so he could not win. So, no, they made it specifically so he could not lose, and he lost anyway lost by your votes. Oh, yeah. Which we were uh, lucky. Jimmy and, uh, Jimmy and Bob and asked them, you know, ever since uh, I haven't noticed that, I got, I, I've been there by a year, but I knew I them what's going on. And yeah. Ever since um, Andrew Lowe said that Barbara's been there, what the hell is he done for him? Say, I'm nothing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're all both the Democrats and the mayor, everybody else up there, and he's done nothing for nobody up in Amsterdam. And, every, and all the, all the, and all the good mills were all thinking of leaving up there, you know, so, you know. Well. But like I say, by the way, Bob, and my last thing, I want to say, I, I put a ton of prayers up there. I know some people up there, and I, and I know some people up there, you know, and, uh, and they're very good. Huh. friends of mine. I know there's a guy up there. He's a, he's almost 70, and, uh, I like, at Gerald Falls and uh, somebody else up there, and uh, Mr. Davis Scott, that guy's got spring of water. I don't know why he didn't want to run for something up there, you know, so, you know? Hey, you ought to come back and run in Perth. That's what we ought to do. Anyway, no. uh, Polly, Polly, I got to go. You're beeping for some reason. I don't know why. I think the I think the the, the line might be bugged or something. I think they're okay. checking checking them out. Okay, All right. Bye. Thanks, All right. Yeah, bye. Take, take care. This is WCSS. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, Bob. Uh, Bob, I'll be going to the Common Council meeting, and and uh, I'm going to mention about the C and D landfill, and in my support for that, because uh, you know, like I say, uh, uh, the more inf information I got, I think it's going to be it would be a good thing, and being the fact that we need jobs, and it's a uh, uh, clean, lean uh, jobs and landfill, it will be good uh, that we bring it up, and I. Uh, so I, you know, and I can't understand why 
we weren't able to vote on it, but I could vote on a casino, and I can vote on a charter change, which one of the things they eliminated, if um, Jim Nicosia can be an alderman for two years, and if we don't like Jim Nicosia, we can vote him out, but the mayor's four years, so why can't the mayor's term also be two years? I mean, uh, because they, and, and get the mayor out after because two Because they don't call it the mayor's charter commission for nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, oh. see, the, the, the things that are in there that are pretty minor, you know, some people are for uh, seven council members, some people are not. Uh, I was in favor of seven council members uh, because there's a lot of aldermen uh, who don't know their constituents and the constituents don't know their aldermen. So I, I, I support that. But some people think we, we're, it's going to cost a, a few extra more dollars and, uh, uh, you know, it, it may not be a, you know, a good thing, you know. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see on that. Some of the people that were in there that we currently have probably are kind of a, a, a disappointment uh you know we worry about whether chet wants to have a cigarette in the park you know when there's a lot of these fumes just to drive to the park is more than chet having a cigarette at the park yeah. or i'll say you know other places have bans on, on on certain animals that are that are walking in the park or, or, or in the city and uh, we don't have a ban for that yeah Okay. We, you know, we got some violent animals that, that, that people possess. That's what I mean. All right. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, outside of that, some of the people were talking about the, the football and stuff and these football players getting into trouble and, and, they, and they don't see the, they get a little slap on a wrist and stuff like this. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's, uh, you know, what's going on with that or so like that. You know, so, sooner or later, I, you know, it's a... Uh, uh, I don't know. Some some really has to be uh, has to be done. Some people think that that athletes are supposed to be role models for kids and stuff. And uh, uh, I don't know. They, 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 to, to me, uh, a pro athlete is just that. They're a pro athlete. Uh, they're there to do a job and 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 to keep that separate from uh, uh, what they do on the outside world. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. 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 This is WCSS. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, Judge. Hey, why didn't you ask what the uh, temperature in Tennessee is? We're always we're always interested in that. Well, uh, why did I ask that? Why didn't you? It's just a quick uh, uh, question. Uh, uh, I, I no, I did ask him that. I, well, I asked him. Yeah, well, I asked him if it was uh, if it was cold down there. If it got down to eighty yet? Yeah, I did ask him that. Okay. Hey, uh, somebody told me you guys can answer anything. Just about. We, we well, may not be right. But will it be the right answer? Well, yeah. that's, oh. that's different. Oh. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you can handle this, but this is also going out to the, to the listeners. Uh, back in 1968, 69, 70, I transplanted a bunch of white pines. Okay. Um, they are now, okay, let's say 70. They're 45 years old. They're 60 feet high. Never until this year have I got the number of pine cones that are falling out of these trees. For 45 years, these trees, you get the, the you know, you get pine cones, but this year, it's like, uh, it's like it's a torrential pine cone. I think rain. I have the answer to that. You do have the answer? I, I think so. I think you Well, well, I, I wanted to know if, uh, here's, here's, the, here's the second part of it. I, w I was wondering if it's a precursor of what's to come this winter. No, I think it's a precursor of your tree is dying. Uh, oh, no, no, no. These trees uh, 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 are... Hey, time out. Time out. Listen to me. Oh, you're saying they've lived listen, their life. Listen, listen to the horticulturists there. Okay, go I, ahead. I've witnessed something like this in the past. All right. And that it's, it's trees know when they're dying. Uh, and it and it may look like it's absolutely prospering, uh, but gotcha. when, when, but when it suddenly throws out all these uh, ac uh, these uh, pine cones and seeds, it knows that it hasn't got much time left in this world, and you probably got a year or two left on the tree. You know that might make sense now that I, I you know I, I calmed down a little bit and thought of it because they were all transplanted at the same time. Yeah, there you go. They're all about the same. They all look healthy and yeah. you know very yeah. strong. And uh, I got a big white pine in the backyard uh, that mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, ancient. I mean, we've been there 35 years and it was huge mm -hmm. when we got there. It was 60 feet tall when we got there. It's it, it it's now dead as a doornail just this year. Mm-hmm. 
No, no explanation for it. I'm talking about 50 trees, probably. Uh, yeah. And they're all, it, it, it's like a pain in the rear end getting these things picked up. Oh, get kindergartners. Get kindergartners come up. They love Have them do a project for school. Yes, they love pine cones. <laughs> they love pine cones. Yeah. Just, just get a couple of kindergarten classes up yeah. there so you can have uh, take as many as you want. You can spray paint them. The crafters love those. Yeah. Oh, my God. Crafters. Yeah. Crafters. Go up to Eagle Mills, put up a sign, free pine cones. <laughs> down to the East End. Go down yes. the craft shop down the yeah. East End. I knew you guys could answer anything. We can answer anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my other question is, uh, it's important to me because it's getting near that time of day where i got to go find something to eat. And I'm tired of going to the same places all the time. I want something something a little different. All right. And well, something and different, i got, I got just a thing for you. Okay, I'm going to hang up and listen. All right. Thanks, Judge. Okay. Well, uh, you, 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 I don't know, uh, Crystal and Forest? Yeah, that's yeah. right. I think they, I, that's where I'd go if I were hungry. Yeah. Uh, you know, they yeah, absolutely, pizza. they, they do. Pizza. They got, they got, they got pizza, pasta, twist ice cream, pasta. ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. I forgot they got twenty four flavors 24 of soft flavors, ice cream in addition yeah. to chocolate and vanilla. You know, huh? You know what I often do though when I go there? What's that? If I don't get a twist for lunch, I'll get a banana split for lunch. Really? You know, got fruit, different food groups oh, in wow. it. Oh. Yeah. It's got fruit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The food groups. Yeah. Yeah, and f- fruit. Yeah. 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 And s- syrup, and chocolate, dairy. dairy. Yeah, you got your, you, you got your, yeah, you yeah. got your, uh, you got, got your, your nuts, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Because that's where, yeah, you, know, you put got nuts on it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of protein in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's yeah. a good, good place. Got your Crystal fats. Forest. And and there's, you know, actually, there's no more complete uh, food than a than a pizza. Uh, it's true. That's right. There's all the food groups. That's right. Wow. Yeah. That's where I'd go. All right. You'd go Crystal on Forest. Crystal on Forest. And where, yeah. would, where would we find Crystal on Forest? Uh, take a left off uh, Route 67 going up, and a little ways up on the left is Crystal on Forest. Okay. Right. It's Kitty Corner from Oh, on Clark. Forest Avenue. Forest Avenue. It's Kitty Corner from Clark. Crystal on Forest. Yeah. All right. That's where I'd go. Hey, you know what? I, uh, you know, uh, uh, Stubborn Jack uh, said, why don't, why don't we do Kaiser's Corner uh, more often? And, and obviously he's not listening because I've done it two or three times right. in the last month. But, you know, he's busy out on the tractor. So, you know, I realize he can't always be there. Anyway, so he, he asked for a specific thing. And this is Rudyard Kipling's Tommy. Wait, it doesn't that done by the who? Uh, yeah, it's probably based on the same thing. I'm not sure since I've never uh, seen or heard uh, the Who's uh, Tommy. Get it before you go. I, yes, I know. I know. You, uh, that's a sto- an astounding statement, right? Especially before, from our generation. Before you, I, I'm quite, before you go into this, uh, just explain to some people what Kaiser's Corner is. Well, well, doesn't everybody know? No, they don't because oh, I well, don't. You know, we do a little, you know, little poultry once in a while. And back on the old show, we began calling it Kaiser's Corner because. Because Bob Kaiser always complains about it when I do it. So. And the Metchus have oh, Kiner's okay. Corner. Uh-huh. Right. And yes, yes. And, you know, he's a big baseball fan, so he, I knew he'd appreciate. Is Was Kiner's Corner similar to Pesky's Pole? Very similar. Very similar. About the same age, actually. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Tommy by Rudyard Kipling. I went into a public house to get a pint of beer. The publican, he up and says, we serve no red coats here. The girls behind the bar, they laughed and giggled, fit to die. I outs into the street again, and to myself says I, Oh, it's Tommy this and Tommy that, and Tommy go away. But it's thank you, Mr. Atkins, when the band begins to play. The band begins to play, my boys, the band begins to play. Oh, it's thank you, Mr. Atkins, when the band begins to play. I went into a theater, as sober as could be. They gave a drunk civilian room, but hadn't none for me. They sent me to the gallery or around the music halls. But when it comes to fighting, Lord, they'll shove me in the stalls. For it's Tommy this and Tommy that and Tommy wait outside. But it's special train for Atkins when the trooper is on the tide. The troop ship's on the tide, my boys. The troop ship's on the tide. And it's special train for Atkins when the trooper is on the tide. Yes, making mock of uniforms that guard you while you sleep is cheaper than them uniforms and they're starvation cheap and hustling drunken soldiers when they're going large a bit is five times better business than pardoning in full kit and it's tommy this and tommy that and tommy how's your soul but it's thin red line of heroes when the drums begin to roll the drums begin to roll, my boys, the drums begin to roll. Oh, it's thin red line of heroes when the drums begin to roll. 
We aren't no thin red arrows, nor we aren't no blackguards too, but single men in barracks most remarkable like you. And if sometimes our conduct isn't all your fancy paints, why single men in barracks don't grow into plaster saints. Well, it's Tommy this and Tommy that and Tommy fall behind, but it's pleased to walk in front, sir, when there's trouble in the wind. There's trouble in the wind, my boys, there's trouble in the wind. Oh, it's pleased to walk in front, sir, when there's trouble in the wind. You talk of better food for us and schools and fires and all. We'll wait for extra rations if you treat us rational. Don't mess about the cookroom slops, but prove it to our face. The widow's uniform is not the soldier man's disgrace. For it's Tommy this and Tommy that and chuck him out the brute. But it's savior of his country when the guns begin to shoot. Yes, it's Tommy this and Tommy that and anything you please. But Tommy ain't a bloomin' fool. You bet that Tommy sees. Isn't that great? Uh, Kipling was a great writer. Yeah. Uh, if you can keep your head ab uh, when all about, uh, uh, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired of waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise well you this goes on six more verses but <laughs> if another great another yeah. great i must have come across a page of uh, oh yeah this all oh, one after another one after another you may talk of gin and beer when you're quartered safe out here and you're sent to penny fights and alder shot it but when it comes to slaughter you'll do your work on lauder and you'll lick the blooming boots of them that's got it now an inch's sunny climb when I used to spend me time a servant of Her Majesty the Queen. Of all them black-faced crew, the finest man I knew was our regimental beastie, Gunga Dean. Uh, you're a better man than I, Gunga Dean. Yeah, that's right. You know, one of the great movies was yeah. one of Kipling's The Man Who Would Be King. Oh, yeah. Sean Connery, Sean Connery and, 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 and Michael Kane. Kane. Yeah. Absolutely. And Christopher Plummer is Roderick Kipling, remember? Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. It's a great, great movie. Oh, I love that. Love that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was, uh, what, about 1968, something? Yes. Or, or maybe yeah, we were in school little, then. Maybe a little later. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Watch it every time it's on. I remember seeing it on the big screen. I was just <sighs> amazed. This is, this is tremendous. Just yeah. tremendous. Uh, well, anyway, uh, Stubborn Jack, that was uh, Kaiser's Corner for today. Is that all right? Uh, that was good. Okay. He picked out a good one. He yeah. picked out a good one. Yes, he did. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they said uh, K Kipling was a really good bad writer. Something like that. <laughs> a really good bad poet. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote a lot. Uh, an incredible amount of poetry. Uh, I got a big, thick volume of it. And it's it's all like this stuff. You know. Uh, what was the other? There was a, oh, uh, Mandalay. Yeah, what happened to Mandalay? I love that one. You know, big big event taking place this Thursday over in the Isles. Oh yes, tell us. Uh, give us your. Uh, uh, this is of course the first time the Scots have been able to vote on uh, independence, like oh, yeah. ever. Ever. That's right. right. They've been together for 307 years, and they're going to have a chance this Thursday to vote either to stay or to leave the. The UK? Yeah. Well, the, the British it, Union. They've really been together longer than that by force, but they've, yeah. they've shared a united kingship, uh, I guess. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Well, they, they, but uh, the, the funny thing is that even if they, they uh, decide to secede, she's still going to be Queen of queen of scotland yeah for now for now until the scottish parliament decides it's time to bring back uh, whoever the modern version of body Prince Charlie is. <laughs> and there still is a Stuart pretender to the, yeah. to the throne there, there is uh, uh, so yeah it'll be interesting to see what happens i, I just got an email from uh, a friend of mine uh in, in, in scotland last night and uh he was he's voting an a on it he's 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 in favor of uh Separation. He and his he and his wife, and uh, it's it's probably, in his view, one of the dirtiest slug them out events that's ever occurred, where the the, the Brits are. 
feeding all this fodder about the yeah, yeah. disadvantages and the oh, advantages. Oh, it's going oh, to be the end of the world. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. How, how do all these other little countries in Europe survive without being part of Great Britain? Uh, know, well, that was one of his be, points. Without being part of the United Kingdom. One, one of his how does points. Luxembourg survive without being part of the United Kingdom? Yeah. Quite nicely, I believe. Quite nicely, yes. 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 Quite nicely. Yes. Yes. yes so, I, we'll, we'll, we'll I, think see. I think it's going to win. It, whatever it is, it's going to be very close, it, with, without doubt. They, they've already sent ballots out, uh, and there's been people who have voted already. And you can vote at 16 there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And one of the, the fears of the, the nays is that all these young folks are going to vote A, and that's going to be the deciding vote. That'd but, be uh, interesting. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'm sure I'll get an email late, uh, uh, you think late gonna, then, Tuesday night. Hadrian's Wall going back up? Or? Uh, <laughs> nah. Yeah. Nah. This is WCSS. You're on the air. Rob, is Paul again. Yeah. I, I, I want to say something fast. Uh, you know, I tell you, some over to over town, Florida. I guess we're going to have some elections going on pretty soon again. I guess, I guess like that, you know. Yeah. And I tell you, so I know some. I know her and her husband's not going to run, but uh, she would. But uh, she would be a hell of a one. Can't to run. Her name is Kimberly Brown, and her husband. Yeah. Well, that's what we need because she's a. She's a. She didn't, she's a technical getter, you know. So you know. Uh, so is this an endorsement? What's that, Bob? Are you are are you are you making an endorsement? Well, I mean, I don't think she's going to run, but I'm just saying. But I asked somebody, I asked her to. I'm not going to tell you who, but to ask her to run. But she's not interested in run. But uh, I tell you something, she's a real good technical getter, you know. Okay. And uh, okay, Bob. Thank you, Mike. All right, all right, Paul. All right. Okay. I have no idea what that was about. Uh, all right, all right. Let's go back to Kaiser's Corner because I got Roger Kipling up on the screen here. <laughs> this, this is Mandalay, which I, I, I just love. This that's a this, bay, isn't it? This is also Tommy Atkins. Uh, uh, they, they did a series of Tommy Atkins. Gunga Din is 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 a Tommy Atkins uh, poem, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's the narrator in that. As in this, by the old Mulmain pagoda. Looking eastward to the sea, there's a Burma girl a settin', and I know she thinks of me. For the wind is in the palm trees and the temple bells, they say, Come you back, you British soldier, come you back to Mandalay. Come you back to Mandalay where the old flotilla lay. Can't you hear their paddles chunkin' from Rangoon to Mandalay? On the road to Mandalay where the flying fishes play, and the dawn comes up like thunder out of China across the bay. Her petticoat was yellow and her little cap was green, and her name was Supiyalat, just the same as Theba's queen. And I seed her first a smoking of a whack and white cheroot, and a wasting Christian kisses on an Ethan, Id Ethan Idol's foot, blooming idol made of mud, what they call the great god Bud. Plucky lot, she cared for idols when I kissed her where she stood on the road to Mandalay. When the mist was on the rice fields and the sun was dropping slow, she'd get her little banjo and she'd sing Kulalalo. With her arm upon my shoulder and her cheek again my cheek, we used to watch the steamers and the Cathy's piling teak, elephants a piling teak in the sludgy, squudgy creek, where the silence hung that heavy, you was off afraid to speak on the road to Mandalay. But that's all shoved behind me, long ago and far away. And there ain't no buses running from the bank to Mandalay. And I'm learning here in London what the ten-year soldier tells. If you've heard the East a-callin', you won't never eat naught else. No, you won't eat nothing else but them spicy garlic smells and the sunshine and the palm trees and the tinkly temple bells on the road to Mandalay. I am sick of wasting leather on these gritty paving stones, and the blasted English drizzle wakes the fever in my bones. Though I walks with fifty housemaids out of Chelsea to the Strand, and they talks a lot of lovin', but what do they understand? Beefy face and grubby hand, Lord, what do they understand? I have a neater, sweeter maiden in a cleaner, greener land on the road to Mandalay. Ship me somewhere east of Suez, where the best is like the worst, where there aren't no Ten Commandments and a man can raise a thirst. 
for the temple bells are calling and it's there that I would be by the old Maumain pagoda looking lazy at the sea on the road to Mandalay where the old flotilla lay with our sick beneath the awnings when we went to Mandalay on the road to Mandalay where the flying fishes play and the dawn comes up like thunder out of China across the bay. Not bad for a bad poet. Not bad for a bad poet at all. Look at this picture. He looks just like uh, Christopher Plummer in The, in the Man Who Would Be King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, when, uh, when they made Gunga Dean, uh, the movie, uh, for years, you never saw the tag at the end where Rudyard Kipling comes out himself and uh, reads the poem. Uh, no. Uh, and then, uh, because it was in litigation, the, the Kipling family uh, did not want... Endorse the movie? Yeah. Yeah, and so they, they uh, he died around the time the movie was made, so they uh, they cut it out, and they finally restored it a few years ago. So he, oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, if you see it now, you'll see. Uh, you'll I'll see, see it. it. You'll see it. Yeah, Sam Jaffe was the uh, was Gunga was, Dean. Yeah, and oh, what a performance! And uh, uh, what's his name? Ray, uh, Raymond Massey played the uh, played the. Uh, uh, the Kali uh, supporter, yes, know, the goddess of destruction and rebirth. Uh, yes, little little blackface sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He what was, a, what a cast they had! Though. Oh my God, and th that's the quintessential uh, buddy movie, isn't it? Uh, the, oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Victor, Victor McLaughlin and Cary Grant and and uh, and uh, what's his name, Junior Douglas Fairbanks Junior. Junior. Yeah, uh, and. Um, What's her name? Is, is uh, 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 Joan Fontaine? Is in she the? She plays the the, the fiance. She's not, not a very big part. I think it may have been her first movie too. Yeah. Yeah. But I oh, remember. she was lovely. She just died, right? She died uh, recently. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, old. Oh, very old. But her her sister's still alive. Olivia De Havilland. Oh, that's right. They they were yeah. sister and sister. Sister and sister, and they haven't they hadn't spoken since 1968. Well, it'd be hard to speak now. It'd be hard to speak now. Yeah. Well. <laughs> oh. What, Jim? No, I jump in any time. <laughs> why, why would it be hard to speak? I mean, you know, you get a hold of a, you get, you get a medium. Yeah, I get a medium. Take chance. Or a halfway. Yeah. Yeah. Houdini tried it. Yeah. 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 A good medium is rare. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're supposed to say, "Well done, Bob." <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, 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 boy. Yeah. Boy. So anyway, believe it or not, we do this again on Friday. Friday's a Friday's a good day. Friday, All right, Friday, I won't be here. You won't. I'll be on the way to oh, on the road again. New Hampshire. Oh, all right, right then. We'll leave it in the morning. All right. So until hill. Friday comes, uh, I'm Bob going with Jim Nicosia and Gavin Murdoch, and this has been the show with no name right here on WCSS 1490 in Amsterdam, New York. <laughs>